Hello guys, RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will take a closer look at the Fury B X215 GT Fire Dancer. From the look and feel it's really nice. It's it's very sturdy for such a small frame. I can move the arms a bit so the screws could be a bit tighter maybe. Feels really expensive, although it's only $130 I guess for this complete package which is nice. This here even comes with a free sky receiver, so I just have to bind it. A video transmitter, a pagoda antenna. We will see about the camera later. The motors are 2306, 2400 kV. With some nice 5-inch props. 5048. I mean, the first thing I noted. There is no real antenna routing for the RC receiver and with this kind of cables just somewhere in there situation I know that my Taranis range will not be cool. I, I think yeah, two, three hundred meters and I will have some RSSI warnings already. The Pagoda looks nice, it's even rubberized. The battery strap and uh, how silly is it to save some cents on a battery strap, which is not rubberized. I have some knives from Runcam here, they are rubberized and that just keeps the battery in place. And also, since you have the battery anders lang, it would be nice to have some rubber pad on the bottom like the X Jaguar head, which is quite a similar, it's a bit smaller and has thicker arms. But it has a similar concept, so quite comparable. And they had this battery protection. And I would actually use it for this new copter. And they had something rubberized from the start. By using this battery protector plate on the bottom and some rubberized Velcro, I feel it's a bit more safe. 1300 graphenes here look really large. The look of it is really cool. I really like this colored accent here. And this looks like it even has a nice place for something like uh, this here, the Legend 2. The Legend 2 is actually a nice fit. The larger GoPro style things are a bit out of place here. Okay, so my first connection to Beta Flight Configurator worked like a charm. Quick look in the CLI section and I did a dump to see we have beta flight 320 already pre-flashed. It's an omnibus F4 SD controller. And I think I saw an SD card somewhere. Yeah, there's an SD card slot. If you mess around with settings on beta flight, it's a good idea to go into CLI section first enter uh, the word dump there so it dumps all the settings on the screen Control A to mark all Control C and just enter this in a text file this is the easiest way to have a complete backup of all the settings in the copter and, and examine it in, in greater detail if you change settings you can always go back to the default settings I kind of forgot to show you the box it came with. It could actually be used as a transport box if you remove the props. An additional set of props, which you will need for sure. And this little prop mounting tool here. Give you a really small but nice instructions manual, quick steps manual. It looks like the beta flight steps are already configured correctly. It's The receiver is serial based and it's on S-Bus mode. Okay, so now that I've figured it out, let me translate the at least the FreeSky bind method for you. I will read it and uh, tell you uh, what's really meant. The remote control to select D8 mode. Okay, that's that's nice, that's okay. The receiver press and hold bind power. It really means you have to have no power on the quad, press and hold the bind button on the receiver, then apply power. Then LED light. <laughs> it 
it means then the LED light uh, will uh, be solid green. Now remote control selection bind. So you have to go into the Taranis and hit the bind. Receiver LED off that frequency is completed. <laughs> it means that if you bind and the LED of the receiver goes off, the bind process is completed. Remote control exit frequency mode. Okay, in, in the remote control you can uh, stop the bind mode. And now let go bind key can be used. <laughs> so you let go the bind key, you have to hold it the whole time. Yeah, and then it can be used. It's, yeah, Google Translate English sometimes this is funny, but it worked. So just make sure we're rolling pitch, rudder, and throttle are working. And I will set up the mode switches. Okay, this is something that I don't fully like. Maybe you will. Uh, it comes with a 16 by 9 cam, which looks pretty decent to me. I mean, the colors are a bit bluish for my taste. Yeah, look at my logo. It's it's supposed to be red, but it's <laughs> tinted a bit. So the red colors are off, totally off. And it's not really a wide dynamic range cam either. Mm. Yeah, I mean, what do you expect from this kind of little man you invest? You can fly with it, but if you fly more, you will want to change it to a better camera, I guess. The camera is not a 1080p camera, by the way. You could be fooled into thinking this SD card here is for the cam and it's something like the split, but it isn't. And they even noted on their Gearbest page that it has a 1080p cam, but it isn't. It's a 16x9 CMOS rather than a CCD. That's another thing. Yeah, and the other downside maybe is the VTX board gets a lot of noise from the other components, so it will not be a totally clean FPV image. And we'll see about the range then. Okay, so let's check out these little guys OST here. And what I really enjoy is that I can Define settings of the OSD here, nice in better flight configurator. I heard a lot of people always talking about, yeah, OSD, who needs extra OSDs? It's all in beta flight. One thing that really amazes me is that, and yeah, it's not a thing of this copter, but rather beta flight and the abilities. The thing that you can design your OSD here on the laptop and in real time see it here on the video output. One important thing that I've learned is that this thing's ESCs are not configured the right way. The motor timing should be changed or else you can get a flip of death, so to say. Thanks to NDRC for finding this out the hard way. It's really easy these days. You can configure it over the same USB port then the flight control, just google for chrome app BL Heli, add this to your chrome apps and then you just start BL Heli configurator which looks like the clean flight or beta flight configurator. Power on our ESCs so we don't want to have props on. First power it up with the battery, then the USB cable and then just hit connect. It warns you to take off props, you do read the setup and then you see the build settings. This motor timing should be set to medium low so the motor don't have hiccups or desyncs uh, which cause flips, unwanted flips. Say right setup. And this seems to be the most important tip. The other really important tip is a video transmitter can be, and that sounds like a cool feature, the video transmitter can be, can swap channels uh, over the remote control. The VTX is affected by your AUX2 port. I for example have the arm switch on this channel and by arming I would change the VTX channel, which is not a good idea at all. And also a short failsafe can change you the video transmitter midair, which is a terrible idea. So. 
remove one cable that goes to the VTX port. So I opened it up with four screws, a tiny FreeSky receiver and I don't know if this tiny antenna will give us a lot of range. If we move away the receiver we see the VTX port here. Here you see the channel and the band, the RF band. And below this VTX port we will have our flight control. So for the channel switching with remote to be disabled, we have to remove this red wire here. This red wire is the second port on the VTX port connector. So you can either unplug it here or desolder it here. This is a quick overview of the flight control board in really close up shot. Now I'm gonna put it together and try to fly it in the state this is. Right after I was so positive about this quad, what happened is I tore the USB port away from the board. It may have been my fault. It did sit really tight there and I applied some force. I can't set up the USB port anymore. That's really unfortunate. This is where the USB port used to sit and I can't imagine me soldering this in a way that it still works. But I think that's one of the things that every reviewer should go through for you guys. We're supposed to make the errors that you don't have to do. Because we got those products usually for free and you have to spend hard-earned cash for this and this would be even more bothersome. On the default setting where the power LED is not lit at all, you have around... Yeah, it starts with 18 milliwatts and goes down to 13 milliwatts. One press and an orange power LED gives you around 100 to 120 milliwatts. And the second press where the power LED is red, you get around 230 to 300 milliwatts. Some channels have better RF performance than the others. And the last channel, the eighth channel, has 300 milliwatts. It smells like solder, which is never a good thing in my experience, but we will see. One downside for me again, this is an RP SMA antenna, so it's not compatible with most of the antennas I use. I would have to use an adapter here. But since this is a pagoda and not a linear polarized antenna, I'm happy to use this here. Okay, let's head outside. Well, well. Guys, I think this is the first maiden flight I'm doing with a rainbow in the background. How fancy is this? Last day of 2017. I hope it's not the last flight of the Fury Bee. Uh oh. <laughs> One motor doesn't spin up. And if I try to take off, you see the left front motor is desynced. There's no way this will be flying other than tricopter style. <laughs> but we still have this rainbow in the background. I'll try to conclude my review about this. Either this motor is defective or it's maybe it's rather some cabling with the ESC board here smelled like solder so poor quality control which is a bummer because I've seen on NDRC's review which I highly recommend you to watch if you haven't already I've seen how fast and agile this thing can fly and I was looking forward to this but now I will see if they send replacement or any recommendations what to do at the moment with all the bugs this thing has, I cannot really recommend it to you. I mean, it's cheap, and if you're into quad building, maybe you can tweak it and hack it the way I did, and then you cannot fly. <laughs> um, now, this USB port being so flimsy isn't nice, but it's a danger at many flight control boards. Okay, so thanks for watching this last video of 2017 with thanks for supporting my channel and for being the nice viewers you are. Bye. And it's still there. I can't believe it.
can you ask for such a thing for a review no you can't